journey of life begins with a single cell. But later it is no longer alone. It divides repeatedly to form a mass of many cells together. And in this video, we are going to learn about this beautiful process that helps us grow to what we are from a single cell. Yes, we will be talking about how the embryo develops. Do we have a scientific name for this process of embryo development? Absolutely, it's called the process of embryogenesis. In simplest words, embryogenesis is the process that follows fertilization. Where exactly does the fertilization take place in humans? Yes, it takes place in the fallopian tubes of the female reproductive system. However, before reaching the uterus, the embryo undergoes a series of divisions that help in its growth and development. Let us focus on one of the fallopian tubes where the egg cell has got fertilized. Now this fertilized egg cell will divide to form two cells followed by four and so on. This results in the formation of a ball-like structure. This ball contains many cells inside it. Do you know what this ball of cells is referred to as? When the cell number in it is 16, then it is referred to as the morula. This further divides to form a structure called the blastula. So will it have double the number of cells in it? Blastula is just a stage where the cells arrange themselves such that they form a hollow mass structure. In fact, the cells align themselves to the ends and leave a cavity within, which gets filled with the fluid. Now the next stage of development will be the blastocyst. It is the stage where the embryo will have cells that have got differentiated and will even differentiate further. Now what exactly is this process of differentiation? Let me explain. Have you ever thought that if we all started our lives with a single cell, then where do all these different types of cells in our body come from? Yes, I know it's from the single cell that was present at the beginning. But how is this possible? The answer to this is the differentiation process. As the name suggests, it is the process in which one cell gets differentiated from the other cells in its vicinity. As a result, we get a whole new variety of cells from these differentiated ones after successive divisions. So coming back to the blastocyst stage, it is now a mass containing differentiated cells. As it grows further, the body of the embryo begins to develop. But for its proper growth and development, don't you think the embryo will require nutrition? Of course, yes. And where will it derive the necessary nutrition from? You may say the mother's body. That's correct, yes. But how will that be possible when the blastocyst is still moving inside the reproductive tract? It is not connected to the point from where it can derive nutrition. Hence, the blastocyst needs to be connected to that particular location. This is where the most important stage of implantation comes into the picture. Can we guess what could it be from the name itself? Yes, it is the step where the blastocyst now attaches itself inside the mother's body at one fixed position. It implants itself there. And where will this position be? Of course, inside the uterus. That is the place where the baby grows, right? So the embryo now attaches itself in the uterus. Few of the main reasons for attachment is deriving nutrition, giving away wastes and exchanging gases. This is served through this barrier that we can see here. This barrier is an organ called the placenta. So can we say that the placenta connects the baby with its mother? Absolutely! Now the embryo is all set to grow into a baby. The stage where the organs of the baby's body starts developing such that they can be identified is called as the fetal stage. And the embryo can now be called a fetus. The fetus grows in the uterus after taking the required amount of time and when the growth is completed, the child is all set to enter this beautiful world. This is how an embryogenesis takes place in most of the animals. But wait a second. We have seen that a hen lays eggs and the chicks emerge out from these eggs. It means they do not grow in the body of their mother. Yes, development of the embryo takes place in two different ways. The parameter to categorize these types 
is the location of the embryo development. So how do we categorize the two types? It's simple. The first type is as we have seen in the case of humans. The fetus grows inside the mother's body. It results in the mother giving rise to the young one directly. Such a type is called the viviparity and these organisms will be called as? Yes, they are called as viviparous organisms. On the other hand, the case of hen is an example of the oviparity. And the organisms exhibiting it are called the oviparous organisms. Well, this was about the process of the embryogenesis, the development of the embryos. Do you remember external fertilization? Yes, the fertilization process which occurs outside the female's body. Fertilization in frogs is an example of this. However, we still don't know the process by which the tiny embryos develop into individual frogs. To understand this interesting process, you need to watch our next video.